Welcome to Travel Log. I'm Greta Georges. On this episode, we'll be exploring some ancient sacred mountains. And this is the holy land of Taoism, and it's where Tai Chi is being discovered. Now, many Hong Kong and Hollywood movies were being created because of this place. So I'm starting my journey right here in Beijing and heading to Wudan Shan. The Udang Mountains are legendary and have long been revered as the cradle of Taoism. Udang Shan lies in Hubei province. It's just a two-hour flight from Beijing to the nearest airport, Xiangfan Airport. From there, hop on a coach for an hour and a half and you'll be right in Udang town. I'm in Udang Mountain and there's like a whole host of accommodation. If you're on a shoestring budget, you can rough it out or come to this, the only four-star hotel in the town. I'm going to settle in because I've got a big day ahead of me tomorrow. It's 7 a.m. now and I'm at the Tourist Visitor Center. Now the buses start riding at 6.30 a.m. So if you want to get a head start, now's the best time. This is 140 kwai, and it's my hop on and off bus. Basically, this is the best and only way to get around and up on the mountain. I'll stop at all the major sites, and I heard that this bus is eco-friendly too. So let's jump on. We're heading up to the Golden Summit, the crown jewel of Udangshan. Its epic landscape and martial arts history have inspired many poets, artists, and wushu practitioners. Its stunning 72 pinnacles laced with Taoist temples has been a spiritual magnet for pilgrims throughout centuries. All right, now this is the last stop that the bus can make before we head up to the Golden Summit. Now there are two ways of getting up. One you can choose by cable car and the second by walking. I'm going to walk because pilgrims and devotees have been doing it for like hundreds and hundreds of years. So let's go up and find ourselves the starting point. If you come unprepared with food and supplies, fret not. This place can be taken as base camp as it's filled with restaurants and hotels and trusty porters. So you can see there's a lot of baffles here. We've got lots of crew equipment, so we got to get everything packed up nice and they're going to help us carrying it up. So they've got a really important job. That's, that's one person carrying <laughs> He's smaller than I am. It's amazing. So I'm prepared with my hat and my sunglasses. He's just speeding away. Now we're going to go down, but the painful part about this is that the lower you go, the higher up you're going to have to climb. The Golden Summit is perched on Tiantu Peak, rising above other mist-shrouded mountains. Climbing up the mountain can be really exhausting, but you should come prepared with an open mind. Maybe I should get on one of these instead. Tempting, tempting, tempting. But you know what? I'm gonna do it on my very own self because I went to the gym for this. For the not so hardy traveler, you can choose to kick back on the sedan chairs, Emperor style. We've been climbing for 40 minutes, so some of us have been sitting for 40 minutes. <laughs> that looks very comfortable. Super. All right. Well, the devotees used to rest in this rest stop. Like hundreds of years ago, it was being built, and um, they came here to just wipe off their sweat, you know, rest their feet. This is my cameraman. All right, come over here. I want to show you something. Um, this is really cool. They say that this water will keep you really young, beautiful, and when you drink it, you might not even die. Well, that was a bit of a stretch. I don't know about immortality, but the water was cool and refreshing. The clean air and water here will pretty much soothe any city beast looking for a peace of mind. There are three heavenly gates that lie close to the Golden Summit. Once you pass the first gate, it feels almost like you're home free. Well, almost. Climbing up the mountain can be pretty exhausting. And if you need a hand to hoist any excess baggage, 
the locals can do just that. This man is a godsend. Wow, he takes one and a half hours to get up. We usually take about three. And he's carrying all this stuff. Ah, stairs. Climbing, we will go. Wudang is great to visit during summer when the weather promises lush green panoramas. Pencil in April through June or September through October for the best views, as monasteries and mountain summits are covered with snow for more than half of the year. The hike up to the top is exhausting but rewarding, and it was stunning to see Tian Tzu Peak's beauty with its razor-edged cliff enveloped in mist. The numerous palaces and temples were built during the Ming Dynasty some 700 years ago. With such natural and architectural wonders, Udang Shan deserves every star of its status as a world heritage site. <sighs> wow! This is it. This is the Golden Summit. Oh, it's so beautiful. I can't believe we've been just so tired, just walking for hours and hours, and finally we've made it. Beautiful. This really is gold. Thank goodness, here we are. The long trek has spiritual significance for devotees. It's almost surreal to be up here with these ancient monasteries wrapped in clouds. This golden summit is built in accordance to Beijing's Forbidden City, and it just shows you how important it is. It's got the highest decree from the emperor, the emperor himself. Is a worshipper, and all the building materials here are taken from all over China, hoisted up to the top of this mountain. It's it's incredible to think how much blood, sweat, and tears went into building this. And it's not just because it's the highest point of Wudang Mountain that's geographically important, but it's the closest point they believe that they can get access to their gods. And I've seen old people climbing with walking sticks. Young children being carried up by their parents. I mean, this is so important to the believers. For over 500 years, this stunning bronze structure has been glittering under the sun. The Emperor of China dedicated this shrine to his patron god, Xuan Wu, who is also known as the Perfect Warrior. You know, we've decided to come and stay here at the Golden Summit because we heard that the sunrise would be beautiful. And it is. Against the backdrop of the mountain with the mist. Well, the fog is, just gives it that air of mystery. And the sun is like this huge giant egg yolk breaking just across the horizon. And it's light golden touches uh, just diffuse all throughout the sky. It's really beautiful. It's day two in Wudangshan, and we set out to explore the legendary Nanyan Palace. This temple perches on the very edge of a cliff and promises a breathtaking view. Every aspect of its construction was planned down to its very finest detail. Can you see that? The palace on the cliff, that's where we're heading to. And I heard that they have one of the best views here in Wudang Mountain. True to the Taoist principles of being one with nature and one with the way, the temple merges seamlessly with the landscape. It's this very synergy between nature and man-made that gives us this outstanding architectural marvel. This is Nanyang Gong, and it might seem like just another temple, but the most interesting part about it is tucked around the back. Nanyan Palace is one of the most spectacular of the 36 scenic places in Wudangshan. 
It was as early as the Tang and Song dynasties from the 7th to the 13th centuries that Taoism was practiced here. Historical records show that there are over 600 buildings in Nanyan, though most of them were destroyed in Qing dynasty more than 350 years ago. People can offer their incense here, but over 800 years ago in the Yuan dynasty, whilst there, kneeling down, they would shuffle forward on that narrow platform and then put the incense on the dragon head, and when they back up, they can't turn around because that's a sign of disrespect to the gods, so they will shuffle backwards, still kneeling. It doesn't look too dangerous here, but if you come over there, this is a sheer drop. You know, it's incredible. I don't know why anyone would risk their lives to do that. But I think that's because the dragon head faces the golden palace. And that, according to beliefs, is where God lives. The dragon head rock protrudes from the cliff edge and it's sculpted with intricate designs. Through deeds and devotions, followers of Taoism pray for good health, happiness, wealth and longevity. These seem to be just the right mix for the good life. And to have it all would be the ultimate. In Wudang Mountain, you hear Fu Shou Kang Ning quite a lot. Fu means prosperity, Shou, longevity, Kang, good health, and Ning, to have peace. In fact, that pretty much sums up the essence of Taoism, and it's what anyone would wish for. So if you're here next time, that's what you'll say. I'm headed to Ziqiao Gong, but instead of trotting on the weathered path, I decided to take the road less traveled and make a pit stop elsewhere first. I've been to many temples and a local guy told me that a hermit lives in this temple cave. So let's try our luck and see if it's in there. To my pleasant surprise, I found the hermit sleeping and thought it's best to just wait in the corner. In Udangshan, you should respect the priest's quiet time and avoid two questions. The first is never ask why they became priests, and the second is how old they are, as longevity is their pursuit. Good things come to those who wait, so that's what I did. But I was so relaxed in this sacred environment that I fell asleep myself. Ah,姑娘，天天，哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈
We then parted ways, but this brief encounter somehow refreshed my spirit. There was something undeniably mystical about this man and the way he viewed the world. Taoism is more of a way of life than a religion. The concepts of yin and yang, the internal balance of life, and the quest for immortality are centrifugal to this school of thought. That is zi xiao gong. Zi means purple, and it's a very auspicious color in China. Xiao means to be above the clouds, and gong is palace. Now, this is a very important location here in Wu Dang Mountain because it's one of the most well-preserved sites, and the Taoist Association even hold the meetings there. Not because of its geographical location, but because this is built according to like awesome bullshit. Let's go have a look. Ziziao Gong is a beautiful Ming Dynasty temple. Inside the main hall is a spiral cupola, and it's the place of worship for imperial families. Here, the emperor sends his orders to pray for the peace of the nation and bless the harvest of the crops. I chanced upon people practicing Tai Chi and decided to join in. Do you know what? This feels really different from doing it in the city. Tai Chi here is quite an experience. You've got mountains and it's just an ancient temple, and the energy here is is really special. Now, if you are in Udang Mountain and you choose to be here for a half a month, or maybe a month, or even a year, you can come to do Xiao Gong and perhaps maybe come for one of their classes in the morning or in the evening. It's it's quite an experience. I really enjoy it. Tai Chi Quan is a slow, fluid form of kung fu. It helps improve the body's qi, which is believed to be our vital energy. The story of Tai Chi Quan's creation was that Zhang Sanfeng, a semi-mythical Taoist master, was inspired by a battle between a crane and a snake. Drum rows. This means I'll be able to catch the regular evening ceremony that happens here in the main hall. I was fortunate enough to catch the evening ceremony, which I find hauntingly beautiful. With the ancient mountains and this elegantly designed temple, the hypnotic chants have successfully transported me back to a timeless and magical space. The Taoist nuns gather every afternoon and evening, and it's definitely worth catching. After the evening ceremony, you can join them for a simple vegetarian meal. The Taoist priests here generally lead a modest and austere lifestyle. As early as the 6th century BC, Taoism encouraged people to seek harmony with nature by having a simple, balanced life sustained by predominantly vegetarian diet. This is where the real action begins. Now you can't say you've been to Udang Mountain without first checking out a kung fu school. And I'm going to speak with the kung fu master and hope that he can enlighten me with the way of the Tao. Let's go. Yuxi Palace was built in 1413, before it was partially destroyed in 1745. Master Yuan leads this school, and he's the 15th generation disciple of Udang Sangfeng Sek. Whose lineage dates back to the very man who created Tai Chi Quan, Zhang Sanfeng. I asked Master Yuan exactly what Taoism is, and his answer was surprisingly straightforward. The Dao Jiao is called Dao Jiao. We just say it in Chinese. Dao Jiao is teaching people how to respect nature, to respect nature, and to be very natural. Then, not to be too natural. Actually, he is telling people how to respect nature. 对不对？去珍惜自己的生命，这是这是道教的这种这种思想。嗯。那么在太极拳里面，他把速度和力量这个东西引起来了。嗯。你基本上就看不见了。啊。所以太极拳它这个文化就给它能结合了起来。它叫什么呢？寒是不漏。嗯。并不是说它没有力量，也并不是它没有没有速度，它有它含住了，对不对？
啊，不露我不给你看啊，真人不露面，哎，隐藏自己，好，就他给道家思想。Tai Chi Chuan is practiced by millions of Chinese around the world today, but it's not just a sport for the elderly. While inspired by the movements of birds and animals, it has a strong martial arts aspect. Its ever-increasing popularity with foreigners made me wonder what Taoism actually means to them. When I when I think back to the person that I was. You know, four or five years ago, and then look at myself now. You know, changes I see are I'm much more balanced, I'm much more patient, more calm, and more in communication with myself. Uh, being aware, awareness of nature. I guess that was to me would be just following nature. It means health and balance to you. How much do you like kung fu? Much. Much. That. As much as a fan, especially when a fan does it. <laughs> How good is that? Yeah. <laughs> Our next stop for the day is the legendary and picturesque Xiao Yao Gu. This place has been described as a true sanctuary of peace. Look, there's the Kung Fu show. I don't want to miss it, so let's go. From Wednesday through to Sunday, there are two free martial arts shows at 10:30 a.m. and 3:30 p.m. This is really quite something against the backdrop of the mountain. Xiao Yao Gu perfectly captures the synergy between nature and men, and that's one of the greatest hallmarks of Taoism. Lao Zi, the founder of Taoism, once said, "Nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished." His words seem to ring so true here in Wu Dangshan. Wander to the back of Xiao Yao Gu, and you find adorable wild monkeys who inhabit this charming area. Where wooden bridges crisscross over rivulets. That's really, really cool to be this up close and personal to the monkeys. Now you want to be careful if you have food with you. You might want to just keep it out of view because they're going to definitely come and grab it. So these monkeys are rather fearless, and I think they actually like human company. It's not just Mother Nature that welcomes you with open arms. The monkeys, when not otherwise occupied, are fantastic hosts too. We head off to the glittering Tai Chi Lake, and the sight of a water body is refreshingly inviting on a hot summer's day. I've been hiking for two days in the mountains, so it's really refreshing to come to this. The change of scenery, and this is Tai Chi Lake. It's the biggest freshwater lake in Asia, and the best part about it is only 20 minutes away from town. Here's my boat. Oh, check it out. This is the interior of the boat. Cool. It's pretty, pretty nifty, and there's a flat screen TV. No, but I don't think we'll be needing that. Oh, look at this. Your very own top deck. You know, after a day of just hiking up in the mountain, you can come to this, the water. Where has it that they're gonna build this, you know, to a fantastic water sport activity center? So much things to look forward to. A strict diet, meditation, and the pursuit of inner calm. The followers of Taoism are admirably devoted. For us city dwellers, our world drowns out the time for contemplation. A lot of the time, we seek to own things, and these same material possessions end up owning us instead. The Taoist priest denounced them, and that's the most beautiful lesson that I have learned. Look at that view. You know, you get a sense of how spectacular Wu Dang Mountain is against this backdrop, and water is just really purifying in Taoism. You know, I feel strangely cleansed after being in Wu Dang Mountain. I think because it's a spiritual place. So, if you are looking for some peace and balance and harmony in your life, this place will lead you on that path. So may your path be filled with Fu Shou Kangning. 
My name is Greta Georges, and this has been Travel Log.